وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ بَنِي آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ قَالَ لَأَقْتُلَنَّكَ قال إنما يتقبل الله من المتقين. This is where the story started. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrate the story of the two sons of Adam to your people. Bilhaq. Without making any exaggeration. Just how it is mentioned in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to give charity, they both gave charity. And it was accepted from one of them, and the other one's charity was not accepted. And the ulemas are saying Habil was a shepherd. He was having animals. And he gave his best animal to Allah. And this is why his sadaqah was accepted. As for Qabil, he was a farmer. He just gave, you know, the food he doesn't like. Do you understand? Something he doesn't like, he gave that thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, his sadaqah was rejected. It's very important whenever you give him charity, give what you want. You will never become among the pious people until you spend what you want. But how comes whenever the masjid is asking for donation, pound, all the time, you are Mr. Pound. You never give the paper one, always the coins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something from you that you yourself need. Going back to the topic. When he said to Qabil, I will kill you. Qabil said to him, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept only from the pious people. If you are given without piousness in you, your sadaqah will never be accepted. Then he said to him, I will kill you. Then Habib said to him, La imbasatta ilayya yadaka litaqatulani. If you stretch your hand towards me to kill me, ma ana bibasiti yadiya ilayka li akutulak. I will never do the same thing to kill you. No. So someone might say, the self defense, brother, what are you talking about? You have to pay back. Remember, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying in one hadith, Whenever two brothers are fighting and they all having their sword and one of them was killed, they would both go to Jahannam. And the Sahabas were like, how is that possible? He was trying to kill him. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that yes, the brother who was killed, his intention was, kill, was to kill him, right? But he was killed. So because of that, they would all enter in Jahannam. SubhanAllah. And that is one hadith. One of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Sa'ibun Abi Waqqas. He said that when it was time or when the fitna of Uthman bin Affan was going on, I remember one hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that a time will come, fitna will happen. This is the fitna of Uthman bin Affan. So Sa'ibun Abi Waqqas said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, a time will come, fitna will happen. When this fitna is going on, the one sitting is better than the one standing. And the one standing is better than the one walking. And the one walking is better than the one running. Subhanallah. So what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is trying to say here, whenever fitna is on, to hold yourself, control yourself is the best thing. Okay? So then he said to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what about if they want to kill me? He said that, you have to be like the son of Adam alayhi salam, who is Habib. When Qabil was trying to kill him, he didn't react. He just leave him. Subhanallah. So do the same thing. I know it's going to be hard, but this is what should be done. If someone is trying to harm you, sometimes self-defend. That is another Sharia law. We all know it. But always when fighting people, do not have this intention of killing them. Have the intention of protecting yourself and not to kill them. And if you do this, inshallah, even if anything happens to you, we hope that you will be a shaheed, and inshallah, you will be part of the Ahlul Jannah. So this is what Qabil, Habil said to him. لَإِنْ بَسَطَّ إِلَيَّ يَدَكَ لِتَقْتُلَنِي مَا أَنَا بِبَاسِطٍ يَدِيَ إِلَيْكَ لِأَقْتُلَكَ And he then said to him, إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ 
for indeed I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni uridu an tabu abi ithmi wa ithmi ka fatakunu min ashabin nar wa dhalika jazau al-zalimin. I want you to take both my sin and your sin if you kill me. And the ulama are saying, no, the right translation is here. I want you to take the sin of killing me and the sins you've committed even before killing me. And then you will end up being part of that uh, wrongdoers. وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَلَهُ His soul keeps pushing him to kill his brother and he did it. Subhanallah. فَقَتَلَهُ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ and he ended up being among the losers. Now he was worried. How can I bury my own brother? He doesn't know because this is the first time they've seen someone die. He doesn't know what to do with the dead body. He keeps carrying his brother wherever he's going. He doesn't know what to do with the dead body. Now Allah is coming to give him the shalusan. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down two birds. In the hadith it says that these two birds, they started fighting until the other one kills the other one. And then the other one started digging the ground to show him how he is going to bury his brother. And he said, قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَا أَعَجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فَأُوَارِيَ سَوْأَةَ أَخِي فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ So woe upon me. I'm, even, I'm not even able to be like this bird and bury my own brother. Subhanallah. Now he ended up being among the losers all the time. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَكَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَنَّهُ مَا قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Because of this, we wrote upon the people of Banu Israel, even the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whoever killed one single soul is like you've killed the entire nation. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا I always give this verse to the doctors. Do we have here any medical doctor? Is there anyone here working at the hospital? No one? Then we need to have someone here. Because I always say to the doctors, I give this verse to them all the time to encourage them. One of the doctors said to me, they're taking 40% tax from my money. I want to quit this job. Then I motivate him with this verse. I say to him, Allah is saying in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا Whoever saved one single soul, فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا it's like you saved the entire nation. And his iman was boosted. From there he said, Shaykh, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy with my job. Because sometimes as a Muslim, if you use sincerity in your job, even if they are taking 100% tax, it doesn't you know, affect you. You always remember that there is a great reward waiting for me from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.